We've got a lot to talk about. We have another guest with us on set here, Olina Nikolayenko. She's an assistant professor of political science at Fordham University and also a native of Ukraine. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me here. So as someone from Ukraine, when you watch what we watch on television, what are your thoughts? Well, it's a very exciting time in Ukraine. It's a turning point uh, in Ukrainian history, but also it's too early to celebrate a democratic victory yet. Even though the president has fled the capital, parliament's named a new leader, they've opened the presidential palace, a lot of people are celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you need to keep in mind that uh, the removal of the incumbent president from power was one of the demands by protesters, but more substantially what they wanted was a regime change, and we have yet to see whether it will happen. So you need to think back to the, to, to the year 2004 when uh, also mass protests were held in Ukraine and uh, the uh, fraudulent election results were overturned, but then we did not see a dramatic regime change and uh, it resulted in the reversal of democratic uh, reforms and the resurgence of authoritarianism. Because the concern is that Ukraine has been through this before, as you mentioned, in the 2004 Orange Revolution. When you say regime change, what does that look like to you? Well, uh, um, the national parliament uh, should uh, pass a series of laws that would uh, clarify and solidify uh, the viability of democratic institutions, uh, of uh, the courts, uh, uh, law enforcement agencies, um, the, uh, that would uh, ensure that the freedom of press is protected and, Im and uh, supervise the implementation of these reforms. And I think we're getting some new developments coming in just in the last couple of minutes that Moscow has recalled its Ukrainian ambassador. An ominous sign, some will probably interpret that as. I mean, what do you think when you hear that? Uh, well, certainly uh, it's a very worrisome development for Russia uh, because uh, the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, is obsessed with the idea of building a Eurasian Union uh, and Ukraine was supposed to be a part of it. But now with the newly formed government, uh, it's very unlikely that Ukraine will participate in the Kremlin project of restoring the Soviet Union in another format. So you think that this new government will further split from Russia? Uh, well, that's what uh, most uh, citizens expect from the new government. Otherwise, it would lose whatever legitimacy it has right now. But as you said, this has come up before. There's been a similar revolution of sorts, and that did not happen. Yes, and that's why uh, President Yushchenko, when he ran for election, received less than 5% of the popular vote. And so how concerned are you by Russia's recent moves, by the foreign minister there? basically calling what happened a coup uh, carried out by hooligans. Do you think that Russia is going to continue to, to, to interfere with Ukraine's politics, or do you think they're going to step away? Absolutely, they're going to interfere and fight uh, till the very end. Uh, um, and fight in which way? What do you mean by that? Uh, well, uh, uh, first of all, oil. <laughs> Yeah. And energy resources are a very powerful weapon uh, that, uh, the Ru uh, that the Russian government has used extensively in the past. Meaning uh, cutting off supplies to Ukraine. Well, or expecting uh, the Ukrainian government, which is bankrupt right now, to pay a very hefty price for energy resources. So break it down for us. I mean, you study this region. You're from Ukraine. What do you actually expect Russia to do in the coming weeks? Um, well, they, uh, they, they will expect at some point uh, um, a payment uh, for the supply of gas and oil. Uh, and uh, the, they know that Ukraine doesn't have, uh, the government of Ukraine currently doesn't have money to pay. So in return, they might demand something, some concessions from the Ukrainian government. Uh, uh, so we, uh, it will be one of the tests for the new government uh, to demonstrate to citizens whether they're really committed to the idea of European integration or not. And we, we've heard this talk from quarters that Russian troops could get involved. Mm -hmm. Is that a legitimate fear? Uh, yes, it's a very legitimate fear because it has, this scenario has been used in the past in the Republic of Georgia, in South Caucasus. Uh, Russia has been very active in giving out Russian passports to ethnic Russians in the Crimea. Uh, and uh, according to Ukrainian law, double citizenship is prohibited by the, a lot of uh, um, ethnic Russians uh, over there hold uh, both Russian and uh, Ukrainian citizenship. So in theory, Russia can claim that it wants to intervene to protect citizens. Okay, Olina Nikolayenko with Fordham University, also from Ukraine. Thank you for being with us today. We appreciate it.